when science fact... The total incoming radiation is in approximate equilibrium with the total outgoing radiation. Meets science folly. <laughs> Introducing Bill Scientific. Serious science with a dash of, well, a dash of Bill. The amount of energy radiated by a body. Bill Scientific. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Don't I always? An accident. <laughs> looking for a scientific place to happen. So sorry. Coming up next. I seem to be shrinking. Air. It's not just for breathing. If it weren't for Earth's atmosphere, we would boil during the day and freeze at night. Of course, it wouldn't matter because we would all suffocate anyway. Our atmosphere acts like a kind of thermostat to moderate or even out the temperatures. The extremes we experience here on Earth are nothing compared to planets without an atmosphere. Take the moon, for example. Mm -hmm. Without an atmosphere to moderate temperature, it can get as cold as minus 233 degrees Celsius at night and as hot as 123 degrees Celsius during the day. This ability of our atmosphere to retain and redistribute heat is called the greenhouse effect, an idea that was developed and experimentally proved by scientists in the 19th century. I'm sure by now you want to know why it's called the greenhouse effect. Okay, Bill. Why is it called the greenhouse effect? I'm glad you asked. Rebecca is here to help me answer that question. The temperature inside this greenhouse... Wait! This is a car, not a greenhouse. It's green, isn't it? But it doesn't look anything like a greenhouse. And there are no plants growing in this. There are now. Okay, I guess it's a greenhouse. Now that we've settled that issue, as I was saying, your car behaves like a greenhouse. Even on a cold winter day, the temperature inside can get very warm when the sun is out. Here's how it works. On sunny days, cars and greenhouses heat up when high energy, shortwave radiation from the sun, passes through the glass window and strikes the surfaces inside. The absorbed energy is re-radiated in the form of lower energy, long wave radiation. Since most of these waves are unable to pass through the glass, they are reflected back, where they are continually absorbed and re-radiated. Once the inside surfaces are warmed by radiation, Air in direct contact with these surfaces is heated by conduction and rises. The rising warm air is replaced by cooler air, which also warms and rises. This process, called convection, transports heat throughout the greenhouse. The glass prevents the cold air outside from mixing with the warm air inside. In fact, to lower the inside temperature, a greenhouse will open and close windows just as you would in your automobile. Jolly good. Okay, but what does this have to do with the greenhouse effect in the atmosphere? You mean you didn't know that the Earth is surrounded by a glass sphere and that we are actually living in a, a giant, giant planetary, planetary greenhouse? I don't think so, Bill. Okay. How about this explanation? The absorption of infrared photons by molecules of high atomic gases cause rotational transitions that emit wavelengths in accordance with the Stefan-Boltzmann law, 
which tells us that the amount of energy radiated by a body is proportional to the fourth power of the temperature of the body in degrees Kelvin. Thank you, Professor Brainkopf. Can we try that again in English? Most of the high energy, <clears throat> I mean, uh, most of the high energy shortwave radiation from the sun in the form of visible and ultraviolet rays passes through our atmosphere without being absorbed. This is because air is mostly transparent, like the greenhouse glass. When these waves strike the ground, their energy is absorbed and then re-radiated upward as lower energy long wave radiation, what we call heat or infrared. You can feel this energy every time you walk on hot pavement or hot sand at the beach. Since the earth has no glass ceiling to reflect this long wave energy, most of it is absorbed by the atmosphere, gases, then re-radiated in all directions, upward, downward, sideways, and toward the surface. This helps to redistribute the heat. Without the atmosphere, long wave energy radiated from the surface of the Earth would be lost to space. Atmospheric scientists estimate that Earth's average surface temperature would be about 33 degrees Celsius colder and there would be large swings in temperature between night and day. Like the moon. Ooh, that's gonna leave a mark. Unlike the atmosphere, a greenhouse contains only a small volume of air, so the absorption of energy by gases plays virtually no role in heating it. The heating is done by conduction as the air comes into contact with warm surfaces. The warm air trapped inside the greenhouse is then redistributed by convection. Conduction and convection also increase the overall temperature of the atmosphere and help to redistribute heat. But this is not the same as greenhouse warming, which depends on certain gases in the atmosphere to absorb and re-radiate long-wave radiation. So even though we say that the Earth's atmosphere is like a greenhouse, there are some very important differences between them. Did you know? Did you know that some gases in the atmosphere absorb more long-wave radiation than others? These are called greenhouse gases. They include water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, ozone, and chlorofluorocarbons. Greenhouse gases make up only a small percentage of the air, but their ability to absorb and re-radiate heat is enormous in comparison to their volume. Oddly enough, oxygen and nitrogen, which make up 99% of the dry non-condensing gases in our atmosphere, absorb almost no radiation. The most important greenhouse gases are water vapor and carbon dioxide. Water vapor is produced by the evaporation of surface water and transpiration from plants and trees. As a gas, it's invisible, but when the water vapor condenses, it forms clouds, fog, and precipitation. The amount of water vapor varies with changes in weather and temperature and from one place to another. It ranges from a trace to 4% of the total volume of the atmosphere. A trace to 4% of the total volume of the atmosphere. As a greenhouse gas, it contributes from about 36 to 72% of the total greenhouse warming effect, and clouds can push that number even higher. Carbon dioxide is the second most important greenhouse gas. It amounts to only four hundredths of a percent of the total volume of the atmosphere, or just under 400 parts per million. As a greenhouse gas, it contributes from about 5 to 26 percent of the total warming effect. But unlike water vapor, which occurs naturally, a fraction of the carbon dioxide that cycles through the atmosphere, about 2 percent, is generated by the burning of fossil fuels for energy. Human activity <coughs> has contributed to the gradual rise in carbon dioxide levels <coughs> over the last century. Uh, what's the matter, Bill? <laughs>